Wonderful. We now move to the presentation of our honorary graduate. We give these awards. This is the highest award and accolade we as a university can give, an honorary doctorate. So may I invite Professor Andrew Lloyd, Associate Pro Vice Chancellor, Academic Operations, to present Professor Martin Davis, CBE. Come and stand with me and face your fans. Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, families and friends, it is my honour to introduce Professor Martin Davies. When the university considers awarding honorary degrees, it seeks individuals who have not only pushed the boundaries of their field for the benefit of society more widely, but who also, ref but who also reflects the values that are important to us at Brighton creativity, sustainability, partnership, and inclusivity. Today, we seek to honor such an individual. Professor Martin Davies is an alumnus of the University of Brighton, qualifying as a pharmacist from Brighton Polytechnic in 1980. Graduating at the top of his year with a first class honors, Martin went on to gain his PhD from Chelsea School of Pharmacy, now King's College. In 1985, after a year at Manchester School of Pharmacy, he was appointed to a lectureship at the University of Nottingham. He was promoted to reader in 1991 and then to a personal chair in 1996. During this period, he was also head of the Life, Health and Agricultural Sciences Division Graduate School from 1995 to 1997, and head of the School of Pharmacy from 2000 to 2003. He was the co-founder and until January 2008, head of the Laboratory of Biophysics and Surface Analysis at Nottingham, known as LBSA. The LBSA has an international leading reputation and track record in scanning probe microscopy and surface chemical analysis of pharmaceuticals, polymers, and biomaterials. The LBSA remains the only group to receive the GlaxoSmithKline International Achievement Award given for internationally recognized work on drug delivery and the techniques for surface and interface analysis. Professor Davis has also been involved with the formation of a number of university spin-out companies and was co-founder and chairman of Molecular Profiles Limited, which was awarded the Queen's Award for Enterprise in the category of innovation in both 2007 and 2011. He has served as scientific secretary and later president of the Controlled Release Society and is a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry, American Institute of Biological Engineering, UK Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists and the Royal Pharmaceutical Society of Great Britain. Martin has organized numerous international scientific conferences, is on the editorial boards of six international scientific journals, and has himself published over 380 scientific papers. Martin has trained over 100 postdoctoral and postgraduate students, many of whom have successfully pursued careers in the pharmaceutical industry, with over 20 becoming university academics at leading international universities. Martin was awarded a CBE in the New Year's Honours List in recognition of his contribution to UK science and his groundbreaking achievements in pharmaceutical research and drug development. Commenting on his honour, Martin said, I have loved my work in scientific research and translating this into pharmaceutical development. I am lucky that I have been able to train and work with many incredibly talented young scientists and also see their careers subsequently flourish. The UK is a world leader in pharmaceutical research and innovation and it has been so rewarding over the years to work in this field. This honour would not be possible without the contribution of those who have supported me on my professional journey that began over 40 years ago. My colleagues and the support from my incredible family. 
I am delighted this university is now adding to this worthy rep recognition of one of our former graduates. Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, families and friends, in recognition of his major contribution to the pharmaceutical sciences through education and research, it is my honour to present Professor Martin Davies for the honorary degree of Doctor of Science of the University of Brighton. Professor Davies, it gives me huge honour to award you an honorary degree of Doctor of Science for your contribution to pharmaceutical science and education, and even better, that you're a Brighton alum. Congratulations. Will you address the audience? Thank you. I'll take that off here. Vice-Chancellor, Chair, distinguished guests, wonderful graduates, families and friends. Isn't this a wonderful day? It's a great day. And I'm so honored to be uh, recognized by the place where I started. And it means so much to me that I have this award. So thank you so much for the award. And thank you, Andrew for reading through all of that. It was about 35 years ago that I was sat in this audience with my parents, a young, shy, insecure Welsh boy. I knew I wanted to do something with my life, but I wasn't sure what it would be. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd become a professor and head of school of one of the top, the world's top pharmacy schools. Never in my dreams would I think that I would work with, supervise over a hundred hugely talented, gifted scientists who went on to do great research in industry and academia. You know you're getting old. I have 25 of my alumni who are full professors. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd start a pharmaceutical company, that it would be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It would have bases in the UK and in America, and it would sell a product which is helping women through fertility worldwide. Never did I think I'd travel the world, meet and befriend fascinating, interesting scientists and work with them. I never thought, I never thought I'd be recognized by the Queen. Alongside one of my great musical heroes, Ringo Starr of the Beatles. <laughs> and he wasn't even the best drummer in the Beatles. Um, it was a great honor. I've told you all of that, not to boast, but just to let you know that I often sit back and think, how on earth did that all happen? And I've come to the conclusion, the realization, that it started here, in Brighton. When I was sat, I'm honest, if I'm honest with you, when I was sat in my graduation, I'd had enough of lectures, I had had enough of exams, and I just wanted to leave, and I'm sure you feel the same. But when I began to think about it, I now realize that Brighton taught me so much. It taught me to think. It taught me to analyze. It taught me to challenge ideas. It also gave me confidence to go forward, which was everything. And I got the best bit of advice when I was at Brighton. In my final year, I did a project with a, a great scientist called Chris Marriott. And at the end of the project, I said, I'm interested in doing research. 
have you got any advice? And he said, don't take anybody's advice. Be yourself and follow your instincts. And in talking about the research, he said, be different. Don't do research that others do. Do something different. I thought about that. I thought he was crazy at the beginning, but then I realized he was right. So that's what I did. And that's what got me a job at Nottingham. Great school. But it was a struggle, because it was difficult science. I found a hundred ways to make my experiments fail. I find it difficult to get research grants because the reviewers said, this just won't work. But I believed in it. I believed in myself and I followed my instincts. And those experiments started to work. In fact, they started to work extremely well. Grants rolled in and my research took off. Now the point of that story is really, be yourself follow your instincts, and have the courage to follow your heart and your intuition. I also learned a great deal from my parents. They worked so hard to get my sister and I a good start in life. They taught me you should not be afraid to take opportunities when they arise. My father, very bright. He read physics at Oxford. He was the only boy, I believe, from Wales to get a scholarship to go to Oxford. He was a working class boy, first in his family to go to university. But he took the conservative decision early on in life to take a safe job back at the steelworks in South Wales. Rather than pursue a career as an RAF officer in the Air Force, which he absolutely loved. He regretted that decision for the rest of his life. My mother, uh, equal, easily equally as intelligent and his intellectual equal, a bright girl at school, was taken out of school at 14. She was never given the opportunities that my father was given, because that's what they did. You can understand my parents were fierce in encouraging us, both my sister and I, to take the opportunities that came our way. My father once told me, the world's your oyster. Go out and enjoy it. I was seven at the time, and I burst into tears because I thought he wanted me to leave home. My sister thought he was hilarious. But I understood what he was trying to say. Follow your dreams. He's encouraging me to do what I loved. Take opportunities. And don't take the safe option. So, class of 2019, opportunities will come your way. Keep your eyes open for them, please. And when those opportunities come, don't take the safe option if you have a fear of failure. You'll make mistakes, that's fine. I've made loads of them in my life. But you'll be a better person for it. You'll also be better at what you do because of it, if you learn from those mistakes. We heard from the Vice Chancellor, you should never stop learning. I agree with that. You've done so well, and you should be proud of yourself to be where you are today. But when you leave here, what you learn is equally important. When I started a pharmaceutical company with one of my brightest PhD students, Dr. Nikin Patel, great guy, my best friend, we knew nothing about running a business. We were academics. What would we know? We couldn't get money to fund the business because people, again, the business is different. People didn't understand it. 
So, we worked really hard. We had to learn from scratch. We had many challenges, but we came good in the end. And as of last year, we had 140 young scientists like you working in our business. And uh, that just shows you what you can do if you learn. So by continuing to learn, you'll be better yourself, you'll contribute to your profession, and you'll also contribute to society. Finally, look around you. I'm sure you've made great friends while you're here in Brighton. And those friends will stay friends for life. My wife and I met at college. And I have to, I'm ashamed to say there were 42 pharmacists at our wedding. <laughs> it, was, it was quite a party, actually. <laughs> to the pharmacists amongst you, you are in a profession where you act as a team, you're a community serving your public, and you rely on each other. The friendship and mentoring and encouragement of others been, has been so important in my career, and I've tried to do the same to others. I've known Andrew for 25 years, and we've helped and supported each other as we have others over the years. So, be supportive of others, because they'll be supportive of you when the times are tough, and they will be. So let me finish by saying once again, huge congratulations to you all. I wish you all every success, and I wish you all every happiness. Thank you very much. So that gives you some understanding of what you are capable of.